Hello everybody, this is Tim here again for another movie review, this time for Free Guy, which I recently finally got to see. Now, I judge my movies from one to four stars, just to go ahead and give a rating for this film. I'd give it a solid three and a half out of four. I thought this film was really good, I really enjoyed it. I did have some problems with it, uh, but all in all, overall, I thought this was a really good movie. Uh, it's pretty much, everybody should probably know the plot of this movie now. It did well in theaters, and I think most people have reviewed that for this already. But, yeah, Free Guys, pretty much this movie about Ryan Reynolds as an NPC, which is non-playable background character and, like, online games and all that. And uh, he becomes sentient, like artificial intelligence, basically. And he goes around and doesn't know he's in a video game and thinks this is, like, the real world and tries to, like, make his own life and all that and go against his programming and all that that he's supposed to be made for. You got Taka Watiti as the bad guy here. Uh, he's, he's pretty funny here. It's pretty funny seeing him in the movie. And uh, you got this girl who's, like, inside the video game that, that uh, is, a like, a playable character. Is a, a person, like, from the outside who's human who comes in as a playable, as a playable character. And uh, he, like, crushes on her. And she's, like, trying... You got this whole plot where she's, like, actually a person who hurt her, like, this boy or whatever, or, like, computer programmers or video game programmers who came up with this game that Takawatiti stole. I think his character's name is Anton. He's pretty funny here, the way he acts. Taco uh, Watiti's always been a pretty funny guy. Whether I like his material or all his movies or not, the guy has talent. And uh, he's funny here. And you got, and they're all like, uh, he's pretty much falling in love with her, and she's inside the video game trying to find this like hidden data thing or whatever that she can show people that will prove that he stole her and the other dude's like video game idea. And the other dude that was working with her who had come up with this idea for this game that was to create characters that could evolve and all that, which explains why Ryan Reynolds' character has evolved in the game. Um, he is, like, working for Anton, working for Taco Watiti. Never really explained why. It's just like he just wants the money, kind of, so it's just kind of like he's a sellout. But and later on in the movie, they try to make it seem like where he has a turn and he wants to go work with the girl again. It doesn't really make much sense. They don't really develop into it very well. And then you got another guy who's there who's just like a friend of the dude or whatever, and he's working there, and then he's pretty much works for Taco Bell TV the whole movie until the main end, where he's like, no, you stole his game, talking about the, the other dude, and he's like, he's my boy, and it just feels like it comes out of nowhere, like, they just do that, like, redemption for that character randomly at the end, and it really didn't amount to anything, like, his character could have been totally wiped out. One other thing for a small, minor problem, um, it didn't annoy me too bad, but it is here, there are a lot of, like, far-left, liberal-type things thrown in here, just probably about three. They're just kind of randomly dispersed into the movie. It wasn't a problem, but I did start to notice it after about the third time. And I don't like political propaganda of any kind in my movies, unless it's a political themed movie or a movie that really is like, you know, really deserving of being like for, about like the politics and all that. It's really immersed supremely well into it. This is a Ryan Reynolds video game comedy where he plays an NPC character. It's not a movie for political stuff, but they throw in like some political, like far left liberal type things and. Once again, I'm not liberal, I'm not conservative, I don't care about either one. As far as I'm concerned, politics are pretty much a sham. We should just do what's right, and that should be the end of it. But as far as this goes, they throw in like these little liberal things, and they kind of throw them in as like far-left liberal things, because not all liberals are like extremists. It's just like the far-left, the people who hang out on Twitter and stuff. Um, you gotta, or not all the people, of course, that hang out on Twitter, because I don't want to stereotype everybody, but a lot of them, or at least the loudest ones. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they got they throwing like these jokes and stuff here and there where the, the dude or whatever who was uh, working with the girl who like claimed that his their video game they tried to create was stolen or whatever he's like got this friend who's like not white or whatever and he's working with him inside the company uh, Anton's company and they're sitting there talking about stuff and the guy's talking to him and uh, he's talking to his friend and the guy's like well I would stick around for your story but it sounds like a lot of white privilege so I think I'll just leave and it's like uh, that was pushing it a little bit they, they throw the kind of stuff in here for comedy. But at the same time, it seems like it's in here. Like, you should, you think in your mind, is this, you know, pushing there as, like, hidden political stuff? Because they won't you know, laugh at it. At the same time, they're trying to get it out there to the masses. That's because Hollywood is a very liberal place. And, they're, and it's not so much that they're even liberal. They're just very, like, trend-type place. They try to play to whatever they think is popular. Like, they'll just jump on the bandwagon, whatever it is, and try to play to it as extreme as possible. Just try to get those people to see their movies. And I get it, it's money, but you don't have to be so cringy with it. Uh, it. It wasn't too bad, that joke wasn't, but it did take me by surprise, when I, because I didn't expect the type of humor in this movie, and when I heard it, I was like, are you trying to sneak something in here? And then later on in the movie, when they're, uh, there's another part um, towards like, um, 
fuck. What was it? Uh, I'm trying to remember the exact line. But yeah, there's there's at least there's at least oh there's one other part where Ryan Reynolds is like in his uh, bank place he works or whatever, and he always gets robbed by the playable characters every day, and they go in there to try to rob the place, and uh, they're in there like uh, getting ready to rob it, and uh, the he comes over and beats up the bank robber or whatever, and takes his gun and tells him to get out of there and go do some good stuff, and the woman's standing there, and uh, and he's like. Listen, you need you need to find better guys than that. And she's like, maybe I don't need a man at all. And Ryan Reynolds is like, yeah, all, all men are bad. And it's kind of like a humor thing, but at the same time, it feels like it's being thrown in there to play up to that like liberal, you know, type audience. It's it's trying to tread like both lines. Like wink, wink. It's a joke about those types of people, but at the, uh, the extremist left. But at the same time, it's wink, wink. Uh, this is for you. Is what it feels feels like because there's so many of them. Because there's more than, well, there's there's about three, actually. But, it, yeah, it, it does feel a little bit more than just, like, a wink-wink joke. But, and then you got another one where Ryan Reynolds is, kinda like, trying to tell a joke to the girl he's got a crush on. He's, like, a, a, a playable character. She's the girl from the outside or whatever that's trying to prove Taco he ripped him off. And he's, like, telling this, like, offensive joke about a gay guy and a dude in a wheelchair. And uh, she says, whoa, whoa, don't, don't get your comedy from uh, online trolls or whatever. And it almost feels like, hey, you know, don't make fun of, uh, you know, minorities and other people or gay people or whatever. Like, don't do edgy comedy. No. Even though that's pretty much what Ryan Reynolds always does. He makes, like, religious jokes, like, religious reference jokes in this movie, like, over and over. So, I, it, is, it, it, it does start to feel a little SJW laden, this movie does. Just a little bit. Not enough to where it bothers you. If you're really against that stuff, there's nowhere near enough here to where it really bothers you. At least not for me. It didn't bother me. There's only about three jokes that I kind of caught. And it, it would have been fine. Like, I wouldn't have thought anything of it if it would have just been, like, one. But it's the fact that it gets up to about three. That's when I started noticing that maybe the director is trying to say something here. But he may not be. I could be totally wrong. And if I'm wrong, that's fine. But at the end of the day, I still really enjoyed this movie. It's really entertaining. Uh, by the time you get to the end, though, he got like he's got this romance with this girl who, of course, is actually human. And by the end, when he saves the day and helps prove, like, from inside the game that the, the Anton character did rip him off or whatever, and the day is saved thanks to Ryan Reynolds' NPC character. By the end, when he actually does that, um, you know that this romance can't really work, so it kind of makes it feel pointless because these are the two that's had the chemistry through the whole movie, her and Ryan Reynolds, but at the end, she can't actually be with him, so she gets to go be with the computer programmer dude who, like, helped her design the thing, and you find out, like, the reason that he was crushing on her so bad Ryan Reynolds was is because it was, like, programmed to him to be attracted to that exact kind of woman because that dude was crushing on her in real life. And they run out like kiss or whatever in the middle of the street. Uh, it doesn't really work because uh, you don't really care about them getting together. Was, you only really cared about Ryan Reynolds and her. Like, their chemistry with, with this random dude is, like, her chemistry is not as good as hers with Ryan Reynolds. Or maybe Ryan Reynolds is just way more charismatic, but it just does not work as well. And that brought the movie down a little bit for me. Maybe if they would have developed that guy a little better before they got to the ending, then it would have paid off a little more. But at the same time, I think they probably tried to avoid that because they didn't want us to see it coming. But by the time you get to the end, it's a happy ending. Ryan Reynolds and everybody saved the day. They get to live inside the game for free as NPCs without having to worry about people running by and blowing their heads off and stuff because they're all sentient beings now. And so, yeah, it's all three and a half out of four. A really entertaining movie. Pretty good time. No real problems with it besides what I mentioned. And... I think everybody should check it out if it sounds like something you're into. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again.